All right, what up, guys? Welcome to New Jersey Horror Con. Make some noise if you love Ghostbusters, huh? You guys like Ghostbusters? Yeah? That's not bad, that's not bad. I think you can make a little bit more noise than that, though, because we have Ernie Hudson and Jennifer Runyon here with us. Make some noise! So, for both of you, do you remember where you were when you first either read the script or first heard about the project and what your first impressions were? Okay, um, well, I, I just got asked to read for this movie with Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd, and... How do you say no? Of course, I want this part. So I went in and I read for my little scene and didn't hear anything for the longest time and finally found out I got it, which I thought was great. I read the script when I got to New York and thought it was so fun. I had no idea, though, that it was going to be what it was <laughs> until I went to the screening and I went, oh my God, this is fantastic. So that was my experience. Ernie? And I, um, I heard about the movie um, from Ivan Reitman. Um, I was visiting a friend at uh, Cedar sinai Hospital, and I got on the elevator, and Ivan got on the elevator, and that sort of moment when you really got nothing to say to each other. And then he said, oh, I'm doing this movie with Danny and Bill. I didn't know who Danny and Bill was. He said, but, uh, but there's nothing in it for you. So, um, and then I heard they were doing Ghostbusters, and there was a part, but they refused to see me. I had done a movie called Space Hunter with Ivan the year before, and the character was just a very different character. But uh, finally, I, I did, after months, I got uh, the audition and went in. And, uh, but when I, I read the script, I just felt it was really something special. I knew it was something special, and I wasn't surprised that it opened number one. I was just really surprised that it's sustained and it's been going on for so many years that people still love the movie in the way that they do. That was a surprise for me. Oh, very cool. And were the first scripts that you guys got very different from what ended up wound up on screen or is it pretty, pretty similar to... Well, the script film? that I remember reading, I had a bigger part. Ivan Reitman says, oh, I don't remember that. Well, uh, whatever. <laughs> so we kind of agree to disagree, but um, it changed a bit. But you know, now that um, it's been... Um, now that I'm 35 years older, um, I, I, I can't say I really appreciate the movie for what, it's a perfect little movie just the way it is and things have a way of working out the way they should be. So it took me a while to get to that, that um, zen state, but, um, but, I, but I love the movie, so. Um, I, 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 you know, I can't remember if, I, if it was similar. I just am just so bummed I still don't have my script. <sighs> I, yeah. That is like one of my tragic losses in a move. Oh man, that is, that's why moving is awful. So, little rumor I've always heard about, always been curious, always wanted to ask you guys, did filming start out with John Candy playing Louis Tully? Do you guys know anything about this? No, it didn't, it, I heard that John Candy uh, at one point had been slated or whatever, but when we started filming, it was always Rick Moranis. It was always Rick Moranis. Now, it might have been him being in consideration before, but it was always Rick. Okay. We rehearsed for four weeks before we started shooting. Okay. And um, I think it was four. It was a couple of weeks. It was. It, it felt like four weeks, but um, but it was always Rick. You know, from okay. the time I got involved. I, it's hard to imagine anyone other than Rick Moranis playing that role. You know. Uh, yeah. It's, no. It wouldn't, yeah. It would have been very, very just, different. I did a movie um, uh, with John Candy of a year or so, a couple of years before I did Ghostbusters. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but. Um, which is, that's the sad thing that happens when you get older. <laughs> but, uh, but I love John, and he was a friend, but uh, it would have been very different. So another thing that's always interested me about Ghostbusters, it seems like it's one of those productions that, you know, it seems like it was really highly anticipated from, like, the moment it was greenlit. So, I mean, do you guys have any memories of that, where, like, studio executives around set a lot more than normal, like, kind of clamoring for each day's footage, or, or did it seem just like a normal shoot to you guys? I was only there one day. One so day. I was that we shot our scene in one day, so wow. I don't have I don't have an answer for that. But okay. yeah. Well, so. I, I think it was one of the first movies where they did, did this amazing rollout. I mean, you started seeing the little ghost symbol, and you didn't know what it was, but it kind of sparked the curiosity, and you kind of go, you know. So by the time we got to the movie, people were really expecting, you know, it. They 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 really did a great campaign. 
uh, I think, uh, going into the movie. You know, the no ghost thing was, uh, first it was just a symbol with a cross and then they put the ghost in. And so by the time we, we um, opened the movie, it was, people were ready for it. Wow. And another production question. I mean, were you guys aware of the apparently like very rushed schedule during shooting? I mean, was every day, was, did you feel like you were really fighting the clock more than normal? or Because the movie, I think, got bumped up in its release, I believe, right? Um, yeah, I had heard. I mean, it was... No, it was just on. I mean, we were, you know, we were, we were moving fast, and but that was just, I thought, just very normal. I'm sure Ivan and the producers, it was a lot of pressure on them to do whatever, but, you know, that's kind of not my department. So when other people stress, I just go, you know what, it's not my department. So, <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, I don't remember it being, but we, 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 you know, it was on. We were making a movie, and it was, it was fun, yeah. Uh, well, one thing I'm sure you guys both have experienced a little bit of, how unpredictable was Bill Murray to work with? Well, you had the, the kind of uh, sexy scene with him. I did, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was great. I mean, it, you know, he's very spontaneous, obviously, and he likes to improv a little bit, which I thought was really fun. And, and he was, it was just a, a day of just fun for me. You know, I, I didn't want it to end. And uh, it was just great. I, he was great to work with, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I love Bill Murray. Um, Billy can be, um, you know, he's the only guy who I've met who kind of is genuine about what he's feeling. And in, sometimes, you know, I mean, Bill doesn't be nice just to be nice. I mean, I'll be kind of not the best state, but someone comes up, I'll kind of, I'll, I'll make an attempt to be, but Billy, what he's feeling is what you get, and I, I really respect that about him. He's the only guy I know who, who walked away from some outrageous amount of money and, and say no in, in minute. You know, my no can get, uh, the higher the number go, I can get a little, you know. But I, I respect the fact that he's, he's genuinely himself, and I love him. And uh, he's the only guy who said, I won't do the movie unless Ernie Hudson does it and I wow. he didn't have to say that and wow. nobody else did but uh, I really appreciate that because in Hollywood not many people sort of go out on the you know now I didn't realize at the time he wasn't gonna do the movie anyway but uh, it was <laughs> nice to hear you know so I, I, I'd love him and and have the greatest amount of respect I love Danny Aykroyd it was fun working with him Harold was an amazing guy but Billy I just really respect and appreciate and I and I really I think probably the most fun thing I had about making a movie is seeing how Bill Murray dealt with his fans I mean he never bullshitted he was always just straight up and genuine and uh, to me that was incredible I just thought he's I, I love him I think he's great wow. so for kids like me who grew up idolizing the Ghostbusters in the 80s there were plenty of great Ghostbusters toys to be had, but every single kid I knew growing up had the blue plastic proton pack. Were you guys surprised when that kind of became like the it toy of the decade? I don't remember. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I didn't. I guess if you didn't yeah. have kids, you might not. Have, you know. Yeah, well, I didn't know it was the it toy, but uh, I know I saw a lot of them. So um, yeah, the uh, the whole merchandising thing, the toys and all that stuff was. Um, was pretty amazing. It would have been more amazing if I had gotten some money from it. But um, but aside from that, uh, it was, guys, have them sign pretty, your proton cool. packs. You know, that's right. See, they didn't pay me. That's why you have to pay for me to sign them. That's. Right. If I'd made a lot of money, I'd be doing like free. Let me just sign it. I've just made too much money. But no, so uh, no, it was. Um, you know, the kids, uh, little kids, love the movie, and they really probably some of you guys. They really connected and wanted to be a part of it. The firehouse and you do a movie that things that you don't think anybody will even notice and um, lines that I really didn't think twice about, people come up and quote. Um, and that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's really cool. That's very cool. Um, you know, the film has so many iconic scenes and iconic characters. Of course, one that's synonymous with Ghostbusters is Slimer. Um, did, was, was that expected that Slimer would go on to become such a big hit, or was that more of like a surprise after the film came out? Well, I think for me it was, I, th I think it was more of a surprise. I mean, you, you do these things, and you create characters, and, you, and some catch on, and others who you think is going to be, 
Don't, but Slimer, uh, yeah, he became, and still does. I mean, he's still, um, yeah, kids love him. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, the Marshmallow Man too, but Slimer has its, he just felt like a part of the team. So, yeah. and I think in the animated, the cartoon series, they included him. I think he was yeah. just part of it all. So That's something I would have loved to have seen in, in a Ghostbusters 3 or something like that. Slimer, you know, Tully, it's the team getting bigger and bigger. Um, but you mentioned Stay Puff, and... I did some research and I saw that apparently there was some pressure to possibly cut the Stay Puff ending and replace it at one point. That the, uh, the creative team had some other ending prepared. They were thinking, oh, I don't know if people are going to buy this or something. Do you guys remember anything like that? Uh, no, I, I, you know, uh, wh as an actor, so much of the decision making, I'm producing a show on BET now called um, The Family Business. And there's so much of you know stuff that goes on that actually the actors are unaware of and don't really need to be aware of and so I'm sure it was a lot of that. in fact I was talking to Ivan Reitman we did a panel together in Chicago and he was talking about a lot of the stuff that was going on behind the scene but I'm on the set I'm doing the scene I don't really you know my biggest concern is you know did is it the paycheck there is the money there um, and they said, oh, we got a problem. I'm like, oh, really? Well, good luck with that. Is the money? Uh... <laughs> so um, uh, there was a lot of things going on that I just wasn't aware of. Okay. So did uh, one I just have to ask, the fan in me, did any of you ever drink high C Ecto Cooler? And are you aware of the intense nostalgic value it has for 80s and 90s kids? For me, no. I have no idea, but my little brother, yes. Okay. That was always in the fridge. Okay, so at least it was, in, it was it. in the house. It was and you in the house. You never I got never, tempted. I never tasted it. No. I You're never like, I'm out of milk for my cereal, I'll try this. <laughs> Ernie, you ever tried um, it? Well, you know, I, it just shows how old I am because I'm just hearing about this now. <laughs> I mean, really. What? <laughs> this was like the biggest beverage of my life. I, I, I never drank it. Um, so everybody you know. here, you all know that's Yes, a make thing. some noise if you love yeah. high C Ecto Cooler, right? Yeah, no, I, I miss it. I miss it. Yeah. Yes, people love this stuff, I'm telling you. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah, no, I, um, I mean, I, I've, I've seen it. I just really know. All right, one thing, and I know the audience wants to dive in, guys. We have a lot of super fans. I have one more I want to get in before, uh, before we get there. Another thing, of course, that's synonymous with Ghostbusters is Ray Parker Jr.'s incredible theme song, probably the most recognizable theme song in the history of theme songs. Do you remember the first time you heard the song? Was it before the movie was released? Or was it in the final cut? Or For me, it was at the premiere of the movie. At the premiere of the movie. And I was just blown away. I mean, everything blew me away that night. Oh, wow. It was amazing. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, no, I, I'd heard it um, you know, early on, and uh, I really liked the song. I didn't, you know, I, I was surprised. It went number one. I think he won the British Academy Award for music for it. Wow. Um, yeah, he did, and um, you laugh. know he—he's a neighbor of mine, and his house is uh, bigger than my house because the song is <laughs> anyway. But um, yeah, he's—I um, I lo I love the song because we did the video where we were dancing, right? And I think last week I was invited to be a part of it, but I was—I was working in Canada. But um, he redid the video that should be coming out soon. They just did a redo of the. The song and the whole thing. Um, oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, no, it's a great song. And I think the song really helped push the movie, and the movie pushed the song. And and uh, and I never got tired of it. I mean, people say, aren't you sick of hearing it? I, I love the song. Even now, I think it's, like, the coolest song. So Definitely you agree. Know. Definitely agree. So, all right, Ghost fans, uh, you guys got any questions for these legends here? Are we still a little shy? Takes a minute for the room to warm up sometimes. There's one. Okay. Speak up a little bit, it's really hard to hear. Why did I disappear from the scene? Well, you know, it's one of those things where uh, you read the script and you say, wow, that's a really cool scene. I, I don't want to be a part of that. Can I go home now? <laughs> that's not true. Um, no, I, I don't know. You know, um, if I really be honest about it, which you should never do on camera, <laughs> the, um, 
I, I honestly think the studio, I'm saying the studio, and I'm not talking about, I mean, I don't know. I, I think they really wanted the movie to be skewed a certain way and certain people to be featured. And I don't think Winston was necessarily one of those people. So the first script I read, we My talked about earlier, um, Winston came in the very beginning of the movie, then after we rehearsed, um, and they saw how brilliant I am, <laughs> it was suddenly reduced to me coming in halfway through the movie. You know, I'm sorry, what? A certain, say it again? Of a certain draft, yeah, the very beginning, before we start. And then, um, this one me and Ivan have our little issues with. But, um, and then, uh, when we did the second movie, five years later, uh, me and Danny opened the movie in the party scene, and then I disappear again, until halfway through the movie. And I'm like, but what sense is that, where, where did I go? I mean, what is, um, so, uh, I don't know, I can't, you know, explain that, um, but, um, I, I don't know. I could actually yeah. piggyback on that just for a second. You mentioned the party scene from 2, and uh, some of you might, may know, may not know that the kid in the party who says you guys are crap yeah. is, of course, Jason Reitman, right. uh, director yeah. Ivan Reitman's son, yeah. who is now helming the upcoming you know, yes. anticipated Ghostbusters sequel. Right. Um, I was curious what your hopes are for what you want to see as a fan in, in that sequel, in, the, in Jason's upcoming Ghostbusters film. Well, you know, for years they talk about doing a sequel that never really happened for whatever reason it didn't happen. Uh, I just hope it's a movie that, um, that everybody can feel, you know, good about. That last movie, a lot of people had issues with, you know, I, I enjoyed the movie, I thought it was fun, but um, so I hope it's in line with Ghostbusters. Uh, Jason, when we did the first movie, he was like a little kid running around the set. When we did the second movie, he was older, and of course he was in the movie. But um, he's an amazing director. He did Up in the Air. He, I mean, he's made some, you know. Um, so I, I just hope he does a great job. And whether I'm in it or not, I just really hope it's a movie that the fans are going to love because you guys have been really. I mean, it wasn't the studio that kept this movie alive. You know that, right? The studio is like, they didn't even know what to do with it. They still don't know what to do with it. They don't even know how to make another one. But, uh, but you, you fans have really kept it alive. And wherever I go in the world, I mean, Guys will show up in their Ghostbuster outfits and their cars. I've seen every kind of ectomobile you can imagine. So, yeah. so I just hope it's a movie that uh, that we really, yeah, that's great. That's in in the spirit of the first movie. And um, of course, I'm not a writer and I'm not a producer, and nobody's going to ask my opinion. But um, I'd love to be a part of it. But if not, that's okay. Just I hope the movie's a great movie. You know, Jennifer, your hopes. Uh well, I. I I just hope the same thing. I hope they, they still can spark some of that magic from, you know, the franchise. And I, 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 I have great hopes for it. I never saw the, the last one, and not for any other reason than I have a hard time sitting through movies right now. Um, but I support the girls, and I think yeah. there's room for everyone. But I, I, I do I hope that, that it does keep the same kind of feeling, you know, that the original did. Yeah, I'm really excited that Jason is, is going to do it, and, yeah. um, and Ivan is producing it. Yes. Um, Danny's uh, very much involved um, as well, so it should be, you know. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, we're all obviously waiting on bated breath for that one. Um, guys, some questions out there? All right, we'll see one way in the back. Uh, in part two, when you and Ray uh, got to the slime. Right. Any fun stories about that? How long did it take to get that stuff off? Yeah, no, the slime was pretty, um, pretty bad. We, uh, we, we fell into the river of slime, of course, and then we came up out of the sewer vent. And, um, of course, there's no such place. I mean, this is movies, but in order to have us come up, they, they put us in a little manhole. We kind of crowded in. We could, couldn't even fit in there. And then they poured slime all over us, so when we came up, we'd be drenched in the slime. But we didn't anticipate that it was going to be below zero that night we were shooting. That was like crazy. So when we came up out of something, you know, in the movie you can see the steam kind of coming off of our bodies. I mean, it was it was so cold. It was, and we shot all night. It was probably the most miserable night I think I've ever spent. And then there was a problem with the 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 film, so we had to go back and reshoot it again. Um, 
But this is, um, this is why they make sound stages. <laughs> yeah, it was just yeah, it was something the the film, and I thought it was a joke. I thought you got to be you got to be kidding me. And I would have complained that they didn't have heaters and they didn't take care of me, but Bill Murr, I mean uh, uh, Danny Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, they're there. I mean it's like uh, they we didn't even have heaters on the set. It was it was like it was nuts. But um, wow. but the the fun thing about movies is you go through a lot of stuff to get the scene to get it done. And, um, and it only takes about, it only lasts about 10 seconds in the scheme of real time. But, um, and the audience never knows, you know, so it's all good. At the end of the day, you eat popcorn and you laugh about it and you remember the good time. So, you know, very cool, very cool. Questions, guys? Um, I see you're active on Twitter a lot. Okay, so I did. Did you catch it? Oh, the um, yeah, you know, I'm like, um, they have a list of all the important people to call uh, and give details about the movie, and uh, I'm like, uh, I think uh, number one millionth and ten, you know. <laughs> Know nothing. Fans know you guys know more about it. I've had fans tell me more about it than than they tell me, you know. And I don't care. All I want to know is how much do I get paid? That really is my. Yeah. I swear to God. I hope it's good. I don't really. I just want to know how much am I getting paid? So uh, and they haven't come to me with anything. So uh, I'm sure whenever they come with an official, if they come with an official offer, they'll give me more details or whatever. But um, uh, I. I don't know, you know, I, I, I read stuff, I, I think uh, there was a story in Deadline Hollywood about him being cast. I saw something about a, a girl yesterday uh, who was cast. So I, I read the stuff like you guys, but I don't really know. And I honestly don't care unless I get paid. That's all I care about. I love it. If I'm not in the movie, I might watch it. No, I'll watch the movie. I'll watch the movie. I think we have one in the back corner. Yes. Well, yeah, the, the scene where we went to the, um, what was that place? Was it, um, yeah, the, yeah, this four, yeah, and we, we ended up having to spend the night there, so it was a scene we were we slept in this room in um in what was it bunk beds or you know so we we shot this scene and the scene was um because you know ghostbusters has some kind of it's you know the stuff for kids but it's kind of an adult thing some of the humor is you know sigourney weaver saying i want you inside me i mean you can take that a lot of ways but i know how i take it but um you know so this is a scene where Danny's laying down, he's sleeping, and then the ghost sort of hovers over him. And then, um, and then she sort of moves down his body, and then his zipper unzips. And he, of course, opens his eyes, and then, and then she, um, I assume, is, is uh, pleasuring him. Um, <laughs> a polite way of saying what. <laughs> and Danny goes... Uh, yeah, okay, it's just, you know, go style. And he kind of, he grips the covers and he, he does his thing. The way his eyes roll back is hilarious. Eyes roll back like, and, oh. uh, yeah, that's... No, I, I think I read that was the case. I think I was from that scene. I pull up the thing. Well, we had, so I think pretty much all of it was, uh, except for that... Talking to a front guard or something. Yeah, yeah, all, I think all of it was gone. I mean, other than, uh, it was a quick moment, I think, where, you know... I'm surprised they kept that there. So, um, yeah, um, yeah, that's all I, you know, I don't know. When you, you know, you shoot a lot of stuff, and so the stuff that gets kept, um, somebody makes these choices, and sometimes you don't agree with the choices, but you you have to do it within a certain amount of time, and that's one of the things that got kind of lost. And since it wasn't me getting pleasure, I could care less. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know I sound selfish here, but. Uh, 
I think it's healthy too, yeah. You know. It's healthy. Okay. All the way in the back. How hard was it to get the marshmallows and all the in the back there? Yeah, the Safe Puff Marshmallow exploded, man exploded, and um, and we all sort of, you know, ran and ducked in different places, and we all got slimed, and Bill Murray kind of came out with nothing on, which we thought it was kind of funny. It wasn't planned, but, um, and then we thought it'd be funny to kind of keep that. But the problem is you have to shoot that stuff for days, and it's really shaving cream, and those jumpsuits, they, they kind of reflect water for a minute, but then they get soaked and then that cream gets into your skin. And Danny and Harold had rashes. Um, I, I probably did too, but mine didn't show as much. Um, but, but it was really uncomfortable. They, well, they had a hard time, harder time with it than I did for whatever reason, but it wasn't really comfortable. And it, it was sticky and just, because I mean, you start shooting at you know, six, seven in the morning, you know, and shoot till seven or eight, sometimes even later, but you're still wearing that nasty jumpsuit. Um, and so it was, it was really uncomfortable. They're probably just topping more shaving cream well, on they do. you they with every keep take piling to keep it, because it match, right? Yeah, it looks like it's drying, so they keep kind of piling it on. And, yeah, that must have been fun. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. There's questions out there. Oh, here we go. Uh, just for the sake of, uh, can actually drive the actual Sorry, the one? Did I drive the Ecto-1? What was it like to drive? Oh, what was it like? It was, uh, it was like driving a car that doesn't run well. <laughs> you know, I mean, the car really sucked. It looked good, but it just kept breaking down. So it's like every movie car. Basically. Yeah, it just, yeah, it just, they only, you know, get it going long enough to get the shot. I mean, we broke down on the crosstown traffic in Manhattan, you know, and the car stopped and traffic was backed up. We had to push the car. It was really bad. And then when the movie was done, they asked me to, this is my relationship with Columbia Studios and Ghostbusters. So the movie comes out, it's a big, big hit, and they have promotions because they're trying to sell the movie. So they want me to go to Bullock's Department Store, which is a big, I don't know if it's around anymore, but Bullock's Department Store to sign autographs. So I'm going there to sign autographs on a poster that I'm not on, but I think if I do it and show that I'm a nice guy, maybe they'll cast me in the next movie, which they never did. But that's another story. So anyway, they send um, the Ectomobile car to my apartment at the time. Um, and it pulls up in front of my apartment building and gets all the neighbor's attention. We go to Bullock's department store and the car breaks down. So, <laughs> so they have to tow the car. I did one, we were at uh, the Man Chinese Theater and the brakes went out in the car. So it's, uh, the car was just awful. I got invited to go to um, Phoenix, Arizona for a car auction. They were auctioning one of the Ghostbuster cars off. They said it was one from the movie, I don't know. But um, literally the car could not, it didn't run long enough to get on the stage. We had to push the car on the stage. It's still auctioned off for like $87,000, but um, but that year of Cadillac was not their best year. It, um, you know, I've only seen one. There's one, Brian Fear in uh, L.A. He has a uh, Ectomobile that seems to work really pretty well. And there's one up in um, in uh, in in Canada, Montreal. I saw a beautiful one. It seemed, but for the most part, those Cadillacs are a mess. Is that why they changed the car for the sequel? Is it like that year Cadillac was so bad or something? No, I think that was because they just had bad taste. Um, <laughs> no, that was kind of a joke. It was a joke, people, for the camera. It was a joke. But, um, no, no, I don't know why. You know, honestly, I'm a big fan of... You always have to weigh what you say because it... But um, I'm a big fan of the third movie, of the girls, the ladies in the third movie, Leslie and... Um, uh, Kristen and, 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 and all of them, uh, Melissa, I mean, I, I love their work. They're really, really, and I mean that sincerely. Um, but, um, but some of the choices, I mean, I don't, I don't think their jumpsuits are as cool as our jumpsuits, honestly. I think it's, um, it looks like a, a worker's jumpsuit, you know? I don't think the car is as cool as our car. I mean, I don't know how you make a movie and not make it cooler. But in my opinion, ours was cooler. I'm just saying. Hell yes. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. But, 
So, some more questions out there, guys. Oh, there we go. Uh, so mine, I, I, I think Quantum Leap was one of my favorites that I did. Thank you. I, I loved it. I love Scott Bakula. I'm honored I was in the pilot, and uh, that was, I think, my favorite. Yeah. And um, I don't know. You know, I just... I just want a job, man, if there's a steady paycheck in it. No, I, um, they're all a little bit different. I mean, every movie is different. It's a different cast. It's a different location. It's, it's not like a job. You go to work with the same people 50 weeks out of the year, and you kind of, everything is, is totally, it's a different story. It's, um, but I, I love working on the Hand of Rocks the Cradle. I love the character Solomon. Uh, I love working with Brandon on The Crow. I love doing Congo. That was a lot of fun. I love working on Oz. But each one is um, it's like a very Grace different... and Frankie. Grace and my Frankie. My favorite. Yeah, I'm going back on Grace and Frankie in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, but um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I just like to work. And um, so there, you know, so I don't know if I can say this one more so than whatever, but. Actually, if I could riff on that for a second, um, I was always curious if you and Harold spent a lot of time together when you guys made Airheads, if that was, you know... Uh, yeah, well, there was, of course, after Ghostbusters, and I had shot a movie called No Escape in Australia. Which is one of the best movies ever made, by the way. I love No Escape. But you know, like, it, yeah, it, it didn't find movie. an audience for some reason. I'm not quite sure, because I like it the movie, will, too. someday. I like, I like the gonna, movie, too. It's incredible. Um, but we, had, we were running late in Australia, so I had to kind of fly... Take one of those rare. I flew all night, and they picked me up at the airport and took me to the set. And uh, my kids flew with me, so they didn't sleep, which meant I didn't sleep on the plane. And I was so spaced out. And that's when I had the scene where I was demanding all the B. Arthur photos and uh, a ton of. And I didn't, I didn't think any of it made any sense. It looked fine on film, but um, but it was a uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But Harold was there. I saw Harold, you know, and even then he was trying to get the other movie made, which. Really? It never happened, but uh, wow. Harold yeah. always wanted to, to do another one, but it just never happened. So. His, uh, his daughter, Violet, was here at our last con, and she has the yeah. Ghostbusters Daughter book. I don't know if you guys have read, but it's a great, great read. Always she covers old. all of Harold's movies. Very brisk. Each chapter is like four to five pages, and you know, you'll be crying like a baby by the end of the book. It's, so, it's a really, really good read. And there's yeah. obviously stuff of Bill and Ghostbusters. And I remember her as a little kid. Um, I'll bet. Yeah, was, um, yeah. She has she a great was... story of meeting Bobby Brown on the set of the second movie and being like, oh my uh, God, that's yeah. Bobby Brown. Like, Dad, you don't get it. This guy's cool. Like, yeah, yeah, no, you know, she... It's uh, pretty funny. Yeah, no, she was, she's great. She's Very great. Cool. Very cool. Any questions out there? Got one of them in the back? Where did you guys see the movie Ghostbusters when you saw it the first time in the And then how, how about that guy? How did you guys feel about it? First time seeing Ghostbusters in a theater. Was it, um, was it a special screening? Yeah, it was a cast and crew screening kind yeah. of premiere, and then the big party afterwards. Big, yeah, it was downtown yes. LA. Remember that? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't remember the theater. Do you? I. I don't remember the theater. I don't know. We, we saw the the screening, and I will say, not because you're sitting here. And I've said this before, on camera. Uh, but my favorite scene was Bill Murray and you guys and how he was screwing with the kid with uh, the, 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 that was, it was really, really funny and very charming and, um, um, and, and you kind of, uh, even though he was being a jerk, but you really kind of fell in love with Bill Murray at that point. I mean, I, I love that, that exchange and it, it felt like such a guy thing to, uh, you know. So it was a great scene. Thank you. Very much, very much. Working on Charles in charge. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> it was fun. Yes. Oh, thanks. Uh, you know, I, I had a great time. I, I loved it. I, I'd never done a sitcom before, and um, Scott and Willie were just great. They really kind of helped me learn the ropes of, you know, sitcom, three camera show, and and I, I had a great experience. It was fun. I liked being Gwendolyn. She was kind of fun. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Very cool. Very cool. And right there. 
Oh, um, uh, stories about the basketball diaries. Yeah, yeah. Another great the, one. Um, I don't know, stories. I mean, I, I love working. I thought Leonardo was amazing. I thought the story was probably a little, at the time, a little too painful for America to see uh, young white kids that screwed up on drugs. Uh, and, and I don't think they embraced the movie that way, but I thought Leonardo was, was great. And um, the scene that he and I had while he was detoxing, I, I really sort of enjoyed it. Interesting, they, um, they cast me and I played an ex-basketball player who lost his career because he got caught up in the drugs. And then he sort of, he, now he's a recluse, he stays to himself except for playing basketball with this kid. And um, there's a scene where Leonardo, we play this game of basketball. So they, um, they cast me and then um, they wanted me to play this game of basketball. And I'm like, but I don't play basketball. <laughs> and they go, oh, of course you do. Just dribble the ball and dunk it. I'm like, dude, are you serious? I mean, I'm not going to dunk, dunk it. I mean, unless you lower the basket like five feet. I mean, it's... Uh, but it, it just it was so funny to me that they assumed that I could somehow um, play basketball, which I uh, which I don't. But um, but yeah, no, I, I loved I loved the movie. I loved working on it, and it too had a like I said a hard time finding an audience. And I think it was a little. I'm sorry, what? Rap play Reggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah I I enjoyed it, but it's. And there's some movies that I felt really good about that didn't find an audience. The Cowboy Way, somebody was here talking about The Cowboy Way. Um, it just never found, you know, never found the airheads. You know, you do a lot of them, some catch on and some don't, and that's, that's um, you, you, can't, you can't predict that, you know, I don't think. It was, yeah, I think so, I think so. So, um, yeah. one thing I wanted to ask actually, speaking of other movies and stuff, have you both participated in the upcoming documentary, Cleaning Up the Town, Ghostbusters documentary? Yeah, I did. Yeah. You did? Yes. Yeah, clean, yeah. that's Claire yeah. and Anthony, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. we were both in that, yeah. Does we just, that, we just yeah. saw them in uh, Manchester a year ago, right? Remember we, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Does that have a release date yet? Is that out? or It's, it's going to be, I think it's going to premiere at the... Um, the Sony Ghostbusters, what's it called? The Wizard Con, the, is it the one we're doing the in Wizard, June? Uh, yeah. yeah, in June at Sony, they're gonna have, they're gonna shut the studio lot down and it's just gonna be about Ghostbusters. It's called the um, Fan Fest, the, yeah, oh, okay. the Ghostbusters Fan, Fan Fest. Fest. Wow. And they're gonna premiere the movie, um, I'm told, there. Oh, yeah. Very so. cool, well we're, I'm sure I'm not the only one in this room that's like very much looking forward to that release. So, yeah. um, we do have time for probably one last question, though. Um, okay, back. Have you ever done animation, voice, voice work, voiceover? I've never. No, I've never. I want to be a cartoon. I think that would be like the coolest thing. But no, I've never done it. I would love, love. Yeah, yeah. Over the years, I've done. Um, I've done. Um, I do. Um, I did uh, Transformers Prime. That was a lot of fun, and um, we did. I think three seasons of that. And I did uh, years ago. I did superheroes. I played Cyborg, and um, I do a show that's on now called uh, Hot Streets. Um, that um, um, I played John Wayne Jet. Um, I, but I. It's so. It's. Um, yeah, I've done a, a fair amount, you know, I mean, if, um, um, I did Puppy Dog Pals, I'm, I've done, um, just did a couple weeks ago. Can I have a job, Ernie? Please? <laughs> well, you know, there's some things that, um, that, you know, uh, yeah, no, so, yeah, voiceovers are, you yeah, know. I, I think that is one of the, the genres in this business that is just so cool. I definitely uh, agree. I yeah. really do. Yeah. Well, and some people, they, I mean, I, I have actor friends who that's all they do, and it's kind of it's great because it's just your voice, and people don't know what you look like, and you can just, um, um, yeah, it's um, it's fun. Very cool. Very cool. Well, that uh, oh, I guess we can squeeze in one last one. Here. I'm just gonna ask a follow up to that. How challenging is it as opposed to being actually on set? 
Yeah, well, sometimes like on Transformers Prime, they kind of take your movement, your, and they sort of, you know, draw the character a little bit in line with, you know, what's, what's, what's happening. But I love the fact that it's all in the voice, you know, the sound, and you can sort of manipulate, you can move things. When, you, when, you, when you're acting, the last thing you want to do is focus on your voice or focus on any one thing. You just want to be there. But, uh, but I love, um, and, and um, in Spider-Man, I was, um, I did something in Spider-Man. Anyway, uh, blended of characters, like I said, I, you know, I can remember pages and pages and pages of dialogue I can't remember a name for crap. I mean, honestly, and the people I know, I have like, who, I, 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 so anyway, so, but, um, um, yeah, so I've, um, what was the question? Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to just sort of, it, I think part of, for me being an actor, and I'm not sure how you feel, but it, it's, the authentic self, that's us is the little child. We really are still that little child. But life forces us to get over that child and become an adult and act your age and grow up and learn a bunch of stuff that you'll never need. And so the little child is still kind of there. And if you're a real successful adult, you just shut him up completely, even though he keeps crying out. And if you ever notice when you really get upset, it's the little kid that's really hurting, you know? So I think it's important, I think, for actors to hold on to that little kid, because the little kid is the one who wants to play. Um, and, um, and that's what I love about, be it, you know, voice acting or acting or stage, it's that a chance to be able to just sort of be in make-believe land and and to be it's okay to feel and do without being judged for that um, so I love it and however it comes I, I think it's great I mean I don't know how, how you I, feel. I feel the yeah. same way I mean can you imagine you get paid to dress up and pretend <laughs> I mean it's just a beautiful job if you can get if you can get one and and it's a lot of fun and and it's a lot of hard work, and it's not as glamorous as people think it is. No, no, but I think um, it does bring you so much joy. You know, I it does me. I mean, yeah, when yeah, I, I get to, to do uh, it, it's to, lovely. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's you know for me it's it's really being able to see the little kid in people that that's where the humanity is. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people are it's the little kid that's hurt, and. Um, I was I was I was doing um, Dragon Ball Z, which <laughs> another film that didn't exactly do a lot, but um, and we were shooting in Durango, Mexico, uh, and we, I was flying through Mexico City, uh, and on the way back to LA, uh, I, uh, it was time to board the plane, and they called the first class uh, passengers to board, and I got up to board, and the guy said, "No, Senor," he pushed me out of the way. And I'm like, really? So uh, I, I figured maybe he just got a little confused. So I went to, to uh, go up again. And he says, no. And he, he just refused to let me board the plane. And so, <laughs> so I took my ticket, and I just kind of held it up in front of his face. I wouldn't let him push me out of the way. And he took the ticket from me, and he looked at the ticket, and he looked at me, and he was really, really pissed about it. And, uh, and I don't know why, but... I could see the little kid in him that was really kind of, it was like a little kid. He was an older man. I mean, it wasn't like he wasn't a kid, but, and I just, I just hugged him. He, I just hugged him, you know, and he kind of resisted a moment, and then, and then he just started crying. I mean, he just melted, and he, and he apologized. I don't speak Spanish. I don't know what he was saying, but then he really was sorry, and he apologized, and he took me on the plane, and gave me a blanket and a pillow and he was so but it's it's that part of us that we connect to and I think that's the part we when we remember that um, it brings out the best of us 
and everybody hurts. And if sometimes when we're being treated really poorly, and if you look at it like that, yeah. you know, you realize you don't know what somebody's day was like or life. And, and if you can, like, step back before you lash out and just kind of have a little compassion, even though they're pissing you off, you know, it's just, it's, it's a better outcome in the world. If we all did that, wouldn't we have a greater world, you know? Absolutely. Well, definitely. Take a breath before you speak. Yeah. Definitely agree there. So, fortunately, we're just about out of time. So, be sure to check these guys out at their table, get photos, get pictures. They have a lot of more stories to tell you guys and make some serious noise to show you how much thank you.